Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. So when we come before his presence, our hearts must be opened. You don't come to God with an opinion, hoping that he agrees with you. When you come to him, your heart is absolutely open. You say, Lord, I am aware of my vulnerability. I'm a product of culture. I'm a product of genetic programming. I'm a product of environmental conditioning. And many of the realities that I've held as true, though popular, though spiritual, may not be consistent with your path. So I come to you with every open-heartedness, trusting that you will build, you will tear down, you will rearrange and bring order to my life. And that's what God is doing in the name of Jesus. Every time you see consistent results in the life of a man, in the life of a people, in the life of a territory, it is because there is something that is done correctly whether or not the practitioners are aware of the dynamics of what they are doing are we together whether or not the individuals can explain in detail what they are doing or not the moment you see consistent results regardless of limitations there are laws there are principles that are being practiced are we together and uh, i'm going to take it from there i shared with us a few things four points in all we took two i would begin to take from um, where we left off last week and then we'll continue number one i told us that the key to rising above the vicissitudes of life rising above the challenges and the things that hold men crippled spiritually economically and so on and so forth the first key is a genuine encounter with jesus christ the first key to becoming relevant is not being educated. The first key to becoming relevant is not having business acumen. It's not even being a leader. Are we together? It's not, it's not any of these things. Success and any kind of impact, a life of notable impact starts from the health and the quality of a man's spiritual life. Say amen. The measure of your impact through God in the kingdom is directly associated with the genuineness of your hunger the sincerity of your love for god while we're away on a ministration in the course of the week i met a man of god who was at the meeting and he just came to see me and talk to me and um you know god did great things and honored himself in the meeting and the man sat down and he began to weep like a baby and he said sir what is the secret I don't know how many times people have asked this what is the secret and I kept looking at him and I said sir I can bet that you might be disappointed if I tell you I wish the secret were just fasting and prayer I wish the secret were just the quality of my word study life I wish the secret were just that I was anointed as important as those things are I told him if you want me to be sincere with you and you have the heart to receive the secret to the dimensions that by the grace of God I've been able to access are we together is tied primarily to my passion for God 
and my sincere desire to see him glorified my passion for God and my sincere desire to see him glorified you've heard me say it and God knows my heart I love God more than ministry I love God more than money I love God more than anointing I don't use him for these things never have and never will I rather give up ministry a thousand times to remain in his presence and to remain in love with him I even love him more than the quest for his presence this is where I believe many people miss it because primarily our motives are corrupted God for us means many things for other people he's just a solution like a charm like a genie that you use and invoke his name invoke his blood invoke his fire invoke whatever to get results you're not going to really host extraordinary results that way are we together a genuine encounter with Jesus that births the fear of God in you that births love for God and love for humanity it's not enough to love God you must love the people he has sent to you and you must love the body I love the body of Christ with all my heart I am part of it I'm proud to be part of it I love the body of Christ I may not agree with every perspective in the body of Christ I may not hold as part of my conviction every opinion and perspective but it's, it's too little a reason to not love the body of Christ I love the body of Christ regardless of man of God regardless of denomination regardless of exploits or setbacks I genuinely love the body of Christ now let me tell you when you get to this spiritual state when you can assume this posture you are ready to host the grace for transgenerational relevance not outside of this condition the Bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of any man that which God has in store not for them that pray not for them that seek him for them that love him when a man truly falls in love with God and is addicted with his presence his life everything about God becomes an obsession to you his house his life his word everything your whole life is poured as a drink offering then you are ready to rise above any challenge I'm telling you challenges will come upon you you will rise and shake them off as if they do not exist believe me I know what I'm saying are we together so we discussed that and I said how that many believers they may be born again but they've not had a genuine encounter with Jesus an encounter that is greater than any circumstance you know when people doubt God and turn and insult God to his face over situations and circumstances Lord I prayed for for tea you didn't give me tea I prayed for bread you didn't give me bread I prayed for CGPA I prayed for a job you are not faithful and um, you know God if you don't do this I will backslide is because you've not had an encounter the remedy for that kind of talk is just an encounter it's not counseling the remedy is an encounter there is a way that a man encounters God that you owe him your allegiance regardless of what happens around your life are we together it's very important whether you bless me or not I'm in love with you to a point of addiction whether ministry rises or not it has no it, 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 it does not contribute in any way to influencing my love and my appetite for you please I pray that as you listen to me this will become a reality that this will not just become a talk from a preacher you see when you are pretending certain things in the kingdom it will only take time time does not change anything but time is a revealer of motives time will reveal whether you genuinely love God or not the second thing we said that is the key and I'll pick up from here now that's where we left up last week is the power of mental transformation the second key that is required to rise above and beyond the challenges in life listen please to rise above the limitations that plague mankind to rise to a life that is of notable transgenerational relevance 
a degree of kingdom impact that outlives you if Christ tarries. The power of mental transformation. Listen, I said it, it never, it never tires me to communicate to God's people the extent to which the quality of their paradigm can determine the course of their future in ministry, in life, in business, in marriage, in any area at all. The quality of your mindset. Are we together? And I told us last week that we are conditioned in two ways, basically. The first condition is a genetic programming. We are programmed genetically by reason of the transfer of traits. I'm being very slow and being very detailed because I want us to get this. The second, which is the most disastrous or most um, notable of the transformations is environmental programming. Say environmental programming. We are programmed environmentally, which can be engineered by culture, past experiences, our levels of exposure, the environment that we grew up in. Chances are that if you never saw a successful person growing up, you do not have a reference. You see, belief is based on a reference. Are we together? You cannot believe vaguely. There must be a reference, preferably a physical living reference that becomes a standard and the platform upon which your convictions are built this is why the disciples were very powerful jesus was a reference and that's why every leader that must teach people part of the assignment of every leader is not only to communicate his persuasions but to be a reference of the same it is easy for people to believe when there is a measure when a when a leader is in different ways reference worthy it becomes easy for individuals to connect when a man is teaching about the anointing and there is some degree of the demonstration of the power and the grace of god upon his life it becomes easy for the listeners to be persuaded by that dimension are we together it is very difficult listen it is very difficult to persuade people over a reality that your life cannot be a reference of no matter how little the reference is that it is worthy of conviction the same thing i am teaching now i am going to be teaching it 10 15 years to come but it will be more impactful than it is now because by that time my life will be a higher reference than it is now the same way some of the things i'm sharing now were the things that i shared a number of years passed but their impact um, were not as impactful as it is now of course I've grown in the anointing but also there have been maybe a few evidences here and there that can back up and support that communication communication a, communicating a dimension of spiritual reality or a dimension of any reality that does not have your life as a commendable reference is very frustrating this already is a lesson for someone that if you want to change your world the first key is to change yourself that you become a template enough people are not that hardened people are only obsessed with results it is God that sees the heart men look at the outward appearance they want to see that if you are teaching on divine health there is a measure of that reality at work in you if you are teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity there is a measure of that reality if you are teaching on leadership or excellence or dimensions of kingdom reality there is a level of persuasion that stems from your own experience are we blessed tonight the power of mental transformation the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 9 it says receiving the end of your faith we discussed that last week it said even the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul bringing your soul through the renewal of your mind to a point where it can host the realities that are resident within your spirit I began to discuss with us and we've done this over different series as we've discussed through the years the power of paradigms look at me listen let me tell you something as great as a man is he can limit God remember our scripture that has become an anthem in this place 
Psalm 78 verse 41. They limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. They said, can God make a table in the wilderness? They limited the Holy One. It was not their fault. It was their conditioning. After 430 years of servitude with no hope of deliverance, it was understandable that such a people as a corporate entity can doubt God. Something about our culture, as good as it is, something about our cultural experiences have informed us, has created an understanding in our minds. I was talking to a, a dear friend today who came over to see me and uh, we were discussing certain things. He was along the side of um, the line of marriage and all of that. And I was sharing with him, uh, you know, generally speaking, you know, we, we got into different discussions and I was telling him that if I were to cop to counsel an intending couple I'm not going to waste time asking a lot of useless and vague questions the first thing I want to examine is their passion for God and then the next thing I want to examine the extent of their compatibility in terms of their understanding what is your viewpoint about God what is your viewpoint about money what is your viewpoint about your assignment and purpose what is your viewpoint about your personal life what is your viewpoint about external influences in your life and hope this does not just apply to the line of marriage it applies to everything there is something culture taught us about god there is something our well-meaning pastors and preachers told us about god their experiences were their sermons. They preached it with confidence. We embraced it with sincerity and we are victims of their limitations. Are we together? There's something that our past experiences have done. I always give an example. If it took someone 10 years to get admission and you teach on favor, it will take an extra anointing for that person to understand that message. Are we together? Because there is no template that represents favor in his life. Most of our families live from hand to mouth. So every time we talk about prosperity, our minds go straight to the people they insulted and the way they insulted them. We have associated prosperity with negativism, with fraud, with, with unseriousness, with fetish, demonic activities. Especially when young people are prosperous. And you know, let me tell you something. After listening to a very powerful message, after listening to a powerful series, Financial Dominion, The Wealthy Place, The Economic System of the Kingdom, you will think that your paradigm will change at once. No, it took a long time for it to be built. It will take a repetition. Repetition of new ideas are the keys to changing our paradigms. You have to, you have to bring forth those new ideas again and again. That's why the Bible says faith cometh. By hearing and hearing. The next word hearing there is understanding. Hearing and understanding what you hear by the word of God. Hallelujah. Proverbs tells us, For as he thinketh in his heart, For as he thinketh in his heart, For as he thinketh in his heart, it didn't say so he will become. It didn't say so he is becoming. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, it equates my physical reality to my life. This is the difference, hear me brothers and sisters, between a CEO who is living in an office with an AC, having secretaries and PAs and sitting down and you think he's just writing. And then a megad, a, a, a security person who is opening and closing gates in anger and frustration. Most times a security person is angry. How can I be working so hard and I'm receiving 10,000 per month and someone is there just writing and he's receiving 500,000 and my answer to that frustration is what? Switch them. Switch them for only two weeks. Take the megad. Don't change anything. Don't give him any orientation. Keep him in that office and take the CEO to the gate. Let me tell you what will happen after two weeks. People will stop going to the office. The CEO will do something to that gate that will make the customers remain there. Are we together? His hospitality, his open-heartedness, his calmness, his people skills, 
And all of these other factors that are important for success will compel the people to love him and remain there. Let's go to our man in the office. I know what he will be doing. Drinking all the juice in the fridge as fast as he can because something about his mind tells him you are, you are certainly not going to be here for a long time. Then he looks for what to steal. He signs documents anyhow and then he crosses his leg watching TV, changing channels, enjoying the AC. Probably texting all the people and saying my life has changed. The place will be dirty. I assure you he will not empty the waste bin. He doesn't have that frame of excellence. His paradigm of excellence is not that way. He will destroy everything. He will misplace documents, scatter them and wonder why they are arranged accurately. At the end of it, he will be frustrated. He will steal something sizable and run away. That will be the end of that man. Another popular example. You wore a shirt for one year. It was always clean and iron. Nobody knew it was one year old. And you gave somebody. And his mindset rubbed off on the shirt. In one month, he turned a white shirt to brown. Have you seen people like that? Yeah. Listen. Our physical environment is but a looking glass. You never change your physical reality by arguing and trying to change things. It's not even by trying to dress well. No, 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 no. It's a culture. You've got to change your mind. So the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, Permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I was not born this way. I re-engineered myself using the word of God and following those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Are we together? You must be disloyal to any understanding and paradigm that has given demon spirits access points to destroy your life. Hallelujah. Paradigms. There are people who will use a water system toilet, a very clean toilet and finish. I mean in a house, not even the one in the hostels. A clean toilet. They enter the bathroom, they saw everything clean. They use it and leave it there and just go out smiling and they tell you I finished. They took their mindsets there. Their mindsets took them there. Are we together? Yeah. There is something about excellence as obvious as it should be. You must be trained to discern it. Don't ever assume that because your mindset has changed, it is so. That's the reason why the higher you rise, the more you must have a greater capacity for patience. Because when your mindset changes, you wonder, sometimes I look at people and I am amazed the way they think. Certain things that should be so obvious, you are wondering how their mindset can veer off and give them such suggestions. The power of paradigms. Are we together? A man can come to you, someone can come to a Jimmy for instance, and sit down and look at him and look at his house and see how God has blessed him and then just look at him and say sir don't be offended anything for the boys and you are wondering you have access to a great man what is there to say sir if you were to be at my age what will you advise me to do or if you will be at my level in life what two things do you think I should focus on now we never ask questions have you seen people who have access to great men one guy came to my hotel room in Abuja and he came just because of his friend. He wouldn't even come. He came there because of some well, a senior, someone like a mentor to him who is my friend. They came to greet me. When they said hello, we're discussing, I served them myself. I'm telling you, before anybody picked the thing, the guy carried the, the something and opened it and was taking it. Whereas the person, his mentor now kept quiet and was listening. You see why that guy is his mentor? Are we together? There is a logic to people's frustration. You can trace it and see why they are where they are. Paradigms. Mindsets. Why should I dress well? Um, do, am I rich? Paradigm. Are we together? There are people praying endlessly to have pot belly. Just like that. Why? Because based on certain cultural experiences. Now listen, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm teaching here. 
there are cultures am i right that train people the moment they see you with some level of weight they say ah this is things are working but you know that absolutely nothing is working paradigms that's what informs people to live fake lives there are people who if god blesses with fifty thousand now their mindset tells them look you need to do something around you to make people believe you belong so they run away and blow up everything and they come to people and you see sometimes let me tell you something when i meet people who are greater than me i have no pressure to prove any point because i know i'm stupid when i'm doing it but then you see a lot of people with their little understanding small results here and there they come and they never learn they are trying to impress you it's me i'm a business person i just read robert kiyosaki's book and you are watching his ignorance that act alone is a revelation of where you are because great people are silent let her works speak for her at the gates and so when we're done let me finish up my story they were about to go i was greeting them you know and then the gentleman just came to me and said sir please just one favor i said what is it say let me snap with you and i looked at him i said this this boy is not wise honestly speaking that's why we must crave for wisdom i said this this guy is not smart one bit i said all right that's okay he snapped with me about three hours later my friend called me and said the guy posted a picture on facebook that me and my very good friend apostle joshua selman now hold on i'm not insulting him he may even be listening now listen listen do you know that gentleman thinks is by snapping with me so that every other person around look let me tell you if a billionaire wears slippers and kaftan and you wear suit and stand close to him something about you will tell you you are not yet ready for this place if Benny Hinn stands today and I side, side by side with him and they say colleagues in ministry even me I know God knows the devil knows that we are not colleagues they will snap me standing when you watch the picture it, I will be kneeling down because the reality of my heart will reflect itself amen say paradigms say mindsets say programmings something that your parents held was responsible for their limitations culture experiences are we together i don't want to be ahead of myself because the third thing i'll be talking about is where we'll dwell today in details and um, I trust that God will change our mindsets. Now, let me tell you something. There is nothing God can do about your life, as powerful as he is, if you are not willing to change your mindset. Lord, I want you, I want you to bless me. And God says, okay, can you allow me to work on you? There's nothing wrong with me. God says, all right. Here you have it. That's good. There is a mindset that is responsible for poverty. There is a mindset that has, keep, has kept many men of God limited in life and ministry. There are certain mindsets that have, have kept corporate organizations small. Sometimes I wish that I knew the things I've learned in the last two, three years. Maybe that I knew them 10, 20 years ago. I would have been 100 times without exaggerating higher than I am now. I pray that you will receive these things and you will believe them. In one minute lay your hand on your head and say lord there is something in my mind that is responsible for my limitations please take it out of me go ahead and pray take it out of me. take it out of me there's something i grew up in nigeria and there is a way nigerians are lovely people they are great people but there is a faulty paradigm take it away from my life take it away from my life i declare my disloyalty to every paradigm no matter how long i have held it a paradigm that has stopped me from accessing the anointing a paradigm that has stopped me from being a leader a paradigm that has stopped me from being a visionary person a paradigm that has stopped me from being wealthy 
Hallelujah. Amen and amen. All right, so let's take today's own. The third key. Key number three to rising above recession. Key number three to rising above any kind of limitation is the discovery and the development of your value and your abilities. I'm going to dwell here. There is a lot to talk about here. The discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. I've done a lot of teachings and I have taught again and again how that a man's relevance, please listen to me, a man's relevance is not based on chance. It's not based on some kind of sentiments. The disparity, the, the stratification between the wealthy, between the great, the anointed, the influential, among many other reasons, primarily is their value. Write this down, please. Your value is a representation of your worth. Your value is a representation of your worth. W-O-R-D. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. This is the index for measuring a man's value. So when we say a person is valuable, a preacher is valuable, a businessman is valuable, a leader is valuable, please listen to me. We're not necessarily just talking about um, anything vague or anything fetish. A measure of the perception that people have over you on the strength of the solutions that you provide on the strength of the problems that you solve and on the strength of the lives and destinies that you transform put it in another way if you are not providing any kind of solution if you are not solving any kind of problem and if you are not contributing to the transformation of the lives and destinies of people you are not valuable and hear me please relevance and wealth in the kingdom is built on a reward system we've said it again and again let me just do a recap on it i'll touch a bit into that right you can get the message the wealthy place write this down this is the fundamental law that governs wealth and abundance and governs greatness in the kingdom our rewards in life and that reward can be financial the sense of security the sense of honor that we receive whatever it is our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what we do number one the demand or the need for what we do number two our ability to do what we do number three the difficulty in replacing us my relevance in life my relevance as a man of God is not just tied to God the demand for what I do my ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me let me tell you when you understand this you can accurately gauge why you are where you are right now this is why pastors are wealthy listen pastors think they are wealthy I was teaching the school of ministry uh, school of ministry students and I said many men of God think they are rich because they are serving God that's not the reason why people are wealthy it's based on a law if I am blessed today among other reasons it's based on the perception that you and other people around this nation and in certain parts of the world have about me which is on the strength of what I do my proficiency in doing it are we together? 
A man of God is not rich because he prayed for the sick. A man of God is rich because he's providing solutions. His solution may be supernatural in origin. The solution may be spiritual. When you connect people to Jesus Christ, you are providing an eternal solution to the predicament of men. And the system of God's economy was designed that every time you dispense value, whether given for free or sold, a reward must come to you. A reward must come to you. The laws are inflexible. You cannot change them. So for as long as there is an anointing upon me to bring people to the place of encounter, for as long as there is an anointing upon me to birth transformation of the minds and destinies, for as long as there is an anointing to birth revival, to bring miracles, signs and wonders, I remain valuable as far as God is concerned and the benefactors. Let me tell you why that is powerful. Much more than business. It is an intrinsic value. Value that is not dependent on any external environment. And value that is rewarded only based on the perception of the benefactors. So one person can bless me with 100 naira as a representation of his comprehension of my value. Another person can bless me with 10 million as his comprehension of the perception of my value. Don't say I am poor. Don't say I am mediocre. What value are you bringing to the table of destiny? Call this stage the table of greatness. There are enough seats for everyone, but your pass is your value. Your pass is your value. Not just any value. Values that are needed and useful. Values that are needed and useful applicable to the predicament of your generation God is helping someone are we together what have you brought to the table of greatness that author you, you know listen listen do you know why they call people thieves and frown because you see rewards but you do not see the value that is commensurate to that reward that's why we hate arm robbers an arm robber brings a gun and says give me your one million and you tell him what is the value he says, i have no value but i have a gun to threaten you so it is bad but that same one million you will give it to someone who offers a value that is worth it listen you don't sit down and wish to rise you grow in value to the level that matches what you desire So, Frank Edward ministers and based on the perception of his value, someone can bless him with 10 million. Whereas there is another musician somewhere in Samaru who may be moving around and nobody will bless him. What is the difference? Their value. Your value is a representation of your worth based on your ability. There are two dimensions to value. I want to talk a bit about value. Number one is intrinsic value. Write it down. Intrinsic or inherent value. Value that came with you. It was a gift from God to you. Part of your packaging and part of your wiring. It can be improved upon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we blessed this night? I really want to challenge you. Look at me, please. Please do not trivialize what I'm teaching you. God is not a herbalist. This is the key that lifts men above recession. I was talking to one of our ladies. She works in the bank. And um, I was talking to her this morning. And I told her, I said, how is it going in the bank? And she said, Kai, things are, are really bad for many people. Though. But she said, there are some. I said that's right in my mind I said that's me you are now talking about me he said there are some their lives have increased and multiplied do you know the concept of recession is not supposed to apply to an individual 
recession only makes sense when you look at it from a corporate and a territorial perspective there was famine in samaria minus the king minus the king number two minus elijah all the people elijah never said please even elijah begged for bread elijah did not beg for bread in samaria he came gallantly and saw people eating their children the other one said we ate my child yesterday we said let's boil this other child and the woman refused are we together prophet we boiled my child yesterday when i was eating my child we ate together now is the turn to eat her own child and they refused and the prophet said no let me tell you something your value vetoes your education your value vetoes your cultural background your value vetoes any limitation i don't care what it is will you open up the gates open up the doors will you open up the gates open up the doors listen believe me brothers and sisters when I tell you your value vetoes a lot of things Sunday Adelaja 96% of his membership in a communist nation right ukraine a communist nation 96 percent of its members are white in a communist nation value the key to eradicating a sense of unworthiness is not criticizing great people this is what a lot of pastors go through this is what a lot of business people go through this is what a lot of individuals go through they think the key is resentment and anger and hatred no the key is to pay the price of discovery and developing your value a student comes in backtrack five years six years a naive young person probably in his teenage comes into an institution i want to study medicine not even having an idea of what he wants to do are we together or the implication and he goes through five six probably seven years of rigorous training they never change his skin they never change his clothes they only change his mind and after six seven years a panel of people will test him and accredits the fact that he is worthy of being called a doctor and they issue a little piece of paper that becomes his authorization value i am surprised when many people say why am i poor what kind of question is that why am i poor why am i suffering the recession and I mean no disrespect as I communicate this. Everyone is left to his lot. If Bill Gates, for instance, let me use finances. If Bill Gates comes here right now and says, everybody, go and hold someone whose life you changed. If you can hold five people, you receive a million dollars. Some of us who roam to everybody, you touch somebody, you say, I will slap you. You've not added any value to my life. Why, why do you want to hold me? I have never been blessed, not by your wisdom, not by your spiritual life, not by your anointing, not by your academics. Nothing about you has changed me. But there are others, there will not be enough room. Everybody says, you changed me. You changed me. You blessed me. You advised me. My business is flourishing because of the idea you gave me. That sickness in my body left because of the anointing upon your life. The power of your secret place changed my life. You preached a message and brought a dimension that changed me. Problem solved. Solutions provided. Lives transformed. And there is a reward waiting for you. I guarantee you. No witch and no wizard from any village and anywhere has the power and the capacity to stand an individual that has worked upon his value. What is my value? What is my gift? What is that ability that can bail me out? 
Let me tell you something. And I'm, I'm a Nigerian. I want to say something that is very serious right now. I'm a Nigerian. I love Nigeria. I love everyone in this country. We are brothers and sisters. Are we together? But listen. Do you know why? I want to be sincere with you. Do you know why a lot of people are suffering this recession now? I know many people think he's Buhari. Others think he's Jonathan. Others people think he's PDP, APC. I'm not a politician. Are you together? Let me tell you. Something about the nose diving of the oil revealed that we have never truly been valuable as a people. We only receive natural resources and we have been covering it for years. The same way to happen to your destiny. I'm in a, a department. They give everybody food free of charge. So I think, let me tell you, you do not generalize impact and success. You must be sure what part you are contributing. Otherwise, you will be ashamed with time. We are worship team. We are all great. But in all sincerity, what is your unique contribution? One day you hold the mic alone. And on that day, we know that you are the one limiting the worship team. On that day, we know, ah, so that mistake in the keyboard comes from you. We have been managing it, but right now, we are a group of intelligent lecturers. We are all intelligent people. The day you have to do a presentation as a person, life must single you out one day to defend yourself. I belong to an anointed ministry, great and wonderful. We are shaking the world. I agree with you. A day will come, you will stand before the sick. Apostle, I'm not there. Hey, Jimmy, I'm not there. My head of department, prayer, ushering, oh, decoration, they are all not there. On that day, that's when you will know whether the impartations you've been receiving or otherwise. Life will challenge you. Life will test it. And until you are able to prove it, the disciples kept enjoying corporate success. Until one day, when Jesus climbed up the Mount of Transfiguration, they were happy. They brought an epileptic person. They said, don't worry about Jesus. We are here. Just keep him down. They struggled. They were embarrassed. Nothing happened. Let me tell you. Do you know what causes jealousy? The ease and the flawlessness that someone who has paid the price to be valuable does on something you have been frustrated about. You've been praying on a sick body and you gave all kinds of reasons. No, this person cannot be sick. Then the person comes for a meeting and even without being prayed for, before the opening prayer, he's healed. And then the person testifies exactly as it happened. You know how people testify? They will say it the way it happened. May God make you to, be, to develop an appetite to be valuable. An appetite to be valuable. Let me tell you how you know you are really valuable. When no monetary value placed on you becomes a burden to the giver, you are exceptionally valuable. Listen. Listen. I can't remember how much this is, how much they bought it. But let's assume this is 300,000. Just an assumption. Right? Assume that this pulpit is 300,000. When they call the price, what do you do? You look at it, the material, the quality, and he says, okay. If they look at this and say, bring 10 million, you look at it and say, no. That's the same way they rate you. So you say 20,000, they say you are telling the truth. Then you say 100,000, they say for where? Is money free like that? But there are others, they don't even say anything. Their value says any amount, priceless, 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 priceless. And so someone brings 10 million and says, sir, please don't be offended it's a privilege for me to do this may you be such a person may you be such a person hallelujah Benihin is coming to Nigeria and the plans that have in fact to a point that the very ministry that is bringing him does not even have absolute control over his coming again the Christian bodies have had to come in because they sat and said no 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 we are going to come in. Now, he's not only ministering in Lagos, he's also going to worry to go and minister in a crusade. Again, say value. Yeah. 
when Ben Hinn enters a, a nation, no matter who is inviting, uh, inviting him, he's received by the ambassador of the America and a presidential delegation. So his coming is not something you wake up and come by mistake. Even if he's strolling, his personality, we call it human capital. My, my desire is that under God, myself and this great ministry will be so valuable. This place has become like a place of pilgrimage right now. The protocol has had to start making arrangements with hotels around. Why? Because every week, groups are coming, individuals are coming from all over the nation. It's called value. If we remain at this level, we will never rise. But if we keep rising by the Spirit of God and through determination, a time will come, somebody will come from another state, another nation, and say it's a privilege, finally. Are you that valuable? Are you that valuable that your absence is an interruption to somebody's life? Are you so valuable? I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart. Then you will know why certain... The money we are saying has left Nigeria did not disappear. Money is like energy. It can neither be created nor destroyed. It is transferred. So it leaves from the point of no value, passes through the place of small value and lands in the place of capital value. Say amen. Wanting something for nothing is fraud. Wanting something for nothing is wickedness. Now let me tell you how many of us approach it. Oh God, will you keep looking at me like this? And God says, I've been looking. I set laws and I put preachers. He said, let them come back to, to life. Remember the prayer of, of, of who? The rich man. Let them come back to life. He said, no, they have the prophets and the law. If they will not listen to them, even if somebody comes back to the dead, they will not listen. Just like there are people God has anointed, but many people will not listen. Why should you fail in life? Your background? Who told you it's because of your background? There are people today with no arms, but they are valuable. There are people with no legs, they are valuable. There are people with no eyes, they are valuable. There are people who cannot speak, they are valuable. We don't love Jesus just because he's the son of God. He's really valuable. It's an expression of infinite value by every standard. Are we together? Any man can determine his lot in life. Any man can determine his lot in life. Your reward is in exact proportion. But apostle, I'm a graduate and now I'm working. I'm getting 50,000. But now I'm married to a wife and three children. That's the limit of your value. Because your education was never designed to fund your assignment. It was designed to help you. You are only working at the limit of what you know. And if you do not know more, you will remain that way. Hallelujah. Yesterday, um, one of the protocol, he, he usually helps me. If, if they need to fix anything in my car, he helps me to fix it. And um, I was going to drop him and I decided to just take a stroll with him. I like talking to people. I decided to take a stroll with him and then to turn and come back. And I was talking to him. I said, do you know why you are in this car now? And he looked at me. I said, there are so many people in Zaria. You can drive and you have loyalty and integrity. It's called value. It earned you the right here. When we stop, uh, let me confess, we went to buy suya. Praise God. <laughs> and so, while they were ordering the suya, I made an order of the suya and he was sitting. I said, do you know why you are sitting close to me now? He said, no, sir. I said, value. You are the one who went to fix the car. It gave you the privilege to do it. I told him, do you know why we are not in the filling station now? He said, no. He said, because the tank is full. The day it finishes or gets more, we will need the filling station. Are we together? Why have I not come to you? 
Why have I not called you? You don't call me. Why should I? Why should I? You are proving as if I'm nothing. You made yourself so. There is a way you make yourself. There are people who cannot even pick calls. There are others who are angry. Aaron, I don't like what you are doing. Hapa. Is it because God has lifted you now? You left us. That's always what they say. I intend to rise. Whoever intends to rise with me, then we move together. I cannot love you so much to be so loyal and keep myself low. I'm telling you why many of us are offended with so many people. Offended. My friend, we used to eat together. But you were not doing the same thing. Now the person has risen. You call the person and a secretary picks. Hello, sir, so, 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 so organization. Please, let me talk to him, Jare. Tell him my name is uh, Ajayi. You don't know me again. And you are shouting and raking and getting angry. May God make you so valuable. Listen to me. Listen to me. May God make you so valuable that your value transcends territories. Because there are values that are only... There are people... That's what we call local champion. One who is valuable within a territory. And so when you step out to another territory, you are as inert as somebody whose potential is not at work. But there are certain people, even celebrity musicians, even if they step out by mistake, everybody is snapping them, they have to run. Now, they may be going to hell. Are we together? But as far as value is concerned, generally speaking, they are communicating value. It's just the content of their music that is demonic. Their vocal training is excellent to a fault. Now you come on stage and you say, I want to rise. What are you called into? I'm called into the music ministry. Really? Yes. What have you done so far? I've been, you know, a gentleman came and met me one time and he came and he said that he's looking for sponsors. I said, what for? That, that he wants to produce an album. I said, who is mentoring you? He said, nobody. I said, who have, can you play any instrument? He said, no. I said, who has ever approved, genuinely approved of your music? He said, no. I said, I'm not going to help you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really helping you by not helping you because I'm, I'm helping you realize the mistake fast. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Listen. Can't you see that this is God's bailout system? I came from a background where we were living in a hut with mud. The, the mud is not in your mind. The mud is not in your mind. Jesus was born in Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He broke that limit. Stop giving excuses. Make up your mind from today. There is something my world can celebrate. Years ago, when I was staying in a little room, praying and reading books, all my money went to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. God, you have given me grace for music and worship. Who can invite me because of the grace I carry? Don't flatter yourself in mediocrity. Challenge yourself based on a reference that is global. Don't flatter yourself. You make mistakes, you sing off key and someone says, Kai, you know, Elijah, this is fantastic. You say, really? No, you didn't do well. You didn't do well. We were glorified because of the anointing. But vocally speaking, you didn't do well. This lack of preparedness is what makes people to mock themselves. Any competition they hear around, they will come. Have you seen people like that? And they say, why are you here? They say, I'm here to win. And you watch the, your competitors. Just by looking at them, you see the flawlessness of their preparation. And just the preliminary screening, you are back home. And then he said, no, in Nigeria, this is because this person is Yoruba. That's why they didn't take me. No, sir, you are not good. Be honest with yourself. It's, I'm not saying you cannot be good. Listen, value is only valuable when competence is added to it. Value 
only becomes valuable when competence is added to it yesterday i was studying on diamonds i just decided to study on diamonds i didn't know that there were different kinds of diamonds different kinds and i was seeing the diamonds and the the rigor in finding them and i mean their structure the the precision of their structure is what makes them valuable Are you competent? Are you competent? Seest thou a man diligent in his ministry, diligent in his business? It's only a matter of time. You may be soaking Gary now, but diligence is like a plane, it will lift you beyond the limitations. It can be raining, and you just take a flight, and within one minute, you are already out of that rain. You are not even aware that it's raining again until you land koinonia i'm challenging you i will be a wicked preacher i will be a wicked man of god to not challenge you in the area of value because that's what i'm doing with my life and by the grace of god and in all sincerity that's what has brought me where i am and i told you where i am now is my preparation of yesterday tomorrow will reveal to you what i'm doing today value always precedes manifestation so when you see a man manifest that's not his true state it is his passive state based on your seeing him now in business in ministry there are many pastors who don't know how this thing works and they may never find out there are many people who don't know how this thing works i'm sorry to say but look at zari as a case study almost every business in zaria almost not all but almost every business in zaria is tainted by mediocrity smallness average there's there's nothing world class there's there's no touch of excellence in it we are limited because of our culture i have my small shop this is nice we never learn someone has paid the price and made the mistake for you then you make it again no you must learn from other people's mistakes Are we together i have hardly seen things in this city and i say it with all humility that have impressed me to know that this is at a level of a global repute from our hotels are we together to our restaurant services in fact from the most part they are terrible yet there are many of us seated here if i ask you now what did you say i've been cooking you are the only one who has not eaten the fact that I've not eaten your food means nobody has recommended it. And that means they've been flattering you by saying it's sweet. If food is delicious, we are not stupid people. It means wife makes cakes. Everybody knows. She's not necessarily done any great marketing. Let her works speak for her at the gates. What is so exceptional about what you do? What do you do that will make me feel like I am losing a lot if I don't partner with you? Everybody say competence. Say it, competence. Say it again, competence. Listen, if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will reap an endless, you will reap an endless benefit. Favor then is when preparedness. The day God wants to bless you, he will station your destiny helpers close to you. Men and women who have the perception and the strength to reward your value. And then he says, now you have prepared yourself. There are too many, you know the problem with many of us, look at me. This, 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 this pressure for recognition. I want to know that I may see you. I said it, I think it was to the School of Ministry students. People write books after 10, 20 years of a track record. But in Nigeria, people write books to start up what they are doing. So someone who has nothing writes 81 keys to the billionaire lifestyle. A book is an authority 
authorization for men to listen to you based on a result that is obvious in your life you are documenting your persuasion to create a track for people to follow years ago a few well they are not really my friends but they are ministers too they met me and said apostle at your level there are some bishops who are not like you you should be on tv and radio i said i hear so that i will get to a point where i'm limited and i have to beg for partners isaiah 77 give me isaiah 61 give me 61 naira or 610 naira i don't want to do all those things I don't want to stand on air playing gimmicks. I want a situation where the day Koinonia comes on air, someone will say, this is what I've been looking for. I have, I have one, I mean, I have a business that is producing $10 million every month. I've been looking for a ministry to sponsor. This is it. Solutions provided. Problems solved. Lives transformed. And you enter your Sabbath at once. Please hear me, Koinonia, and all those following. Not everybody is a victim of this recession. I tell you the sincere truth from the depth of my heart. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. The finance of this ministry has skyrocketed in a way and a dimension that is irrecoverable this year more than any year put together now please I'm sorry if it looks like I'm boasting I'm only challenging you in a time we call recession say something I do not know say it again something I do not know may be responsible for my limitation one of my pastor friends started bus transport, bus services, and he called me. He said, Apostle, I can't believe this. You've been transporting people on bus services and we're not so much in our church. Just at one junction where everybody will wait. After one month, we looked at when they sent the report, I said, nobody a trek from wherever you are coming. And we've done this without fail. Not for Friday's program. Any time this ministry is holding any program, once it is night, we're a responsible ministry. At any time, whether it was planned or not. Brothers and sisters, there is something that is being done. This is where I'm taking you to. It was not like that. Our first crusade, they were almost locking me because of 150,000. Aaron, whereas the money that is circulating now was still there. I have learned through pain. I have learned through mistakes. I've learned through mentorship and you are receiving it for free. I pray that you will treasure it and I pray that it will lift you higher than ever. Some of you are about to get married. You know you are not ready. Are we together? You already know, not by revelation, by wisdom that your wife is going to suffer. You know that your children are going to suffer. How do I know that there is no plan? Dotham was became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. You are not preparing your way. There can't be greatness. Don't be too quick to show forth. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Prophesy to yourself. Say myself. Prepare. Myself. Be competent. Myself. Work on yourself. Don't make noise. Don't take this colleague mentality moving around. I used to know you, Pastor Femi. We are fellow pastors. Colleague mentality is the key to the undoing of many people. Oh, we were classmates. The same class. The same university. The same this. The, we are both doctors. We are both professors. No, no, no. The Bible says one star different from another in glory. Say in the name of Jesus. There is a, an ability. Say there is a gift. Within me. That is greater than Zaria. Greater than Nigeria. There is an intrinsic value. Within me. That can bless me. 
that can bless the kingdom and I will search it out hallelujah there is an intrinsic value now intrinsic value has to do with value that is inherent the only thing you do is to develop it is there I'll give you an example intellectual property is an intrinsic value you don't refrigerate it you don't warm it you don't keep it in a safe in a bank is there is there you've trained your mind intelligence intellectual property is there he's playing this keyboard now this is intrinsic value is value within him value that does not depend on the external environment for its performance are we together now yeah a photocopy machine is not an intrinsic value the machine needs a demand the machine needs a lot of things the machine needs light are we together the greatest way to rise is to walk first on your intrinsic value you have the grace to sing work on it you are an entrepreneur work on it don't say i'm a ceo ceo that is not producing results is a sign to sit down say i'm a potential ceo there are people moving all around with complimentary cards and flattering themselves i am this and that and that i'm into real estate agro allied products and so on and so forth we have branches in in, in ghana Benin republic Portacourt, lagos and so on and so forth and you look at the person who is talking you ask him sir what do you know about real estate say look that's not the most important thing me i'm telling you my father did it he gave me and he has one plot of land somewhere you see we we mock ourselves packaging is only meaningful when there is content packaging is only meaningful when there is content packaging without content is like a balloon you hold a balloon and claim that the balloon is is a metal you will just touch it and it will burst i sing better than many people who are called into the music ministry yet they want me to buy their album no i told you last week there are many people who claim they can cook they have restaurants are we together and you start bullying people and say ah shouldn't you come and eat in my restaurant i saw you the other day ella you should come to my restaurant to eat are we not fellow koinonia people she wants to be healthy she wants to be healthy and as far as it is concerned you have not worked on yourself one of our school of ministry ladies uh, um, she made one beautiful work just a beautiful artwork the students saw it i mean she's here very fantastic artwork and when I saw it, I said, my goodness, this is excellent. I told her, improve yourself and monetize your value. Monetizing your value is the last thing you do when it is flawlessly competent. Then you place a price on it. Are we together? Now, I want everybody to write. Write three things you know God has put in you that must be developed and deployed. Please write it down. Young, old, write it down type it right do whatever it is please write it down don't flatter yourself don't write what you don't have just patiently think and you'll find your own don't just write because your neighbor wrote something value value Aaron is here he handles most of the logistics of the you know people around different kinds of logistics why because he's worked on himself and he's still working on himself the other day I went to his house and I saw a blackboard close to his, uh, just a little like uh, dining or thereabout and his uh, little office that he has and I saw him writing goals. I saw targets. I saw plans of action. I said, this is excellent. This person is going to go far. Please, do not think discovery simply means it is worthy of reward. That you have discovered a thing does not mean they will reward you. It must be developed to the highest level of excellence and then communicated with integrity communicated with discipline and communicated with the anointing hallelujah I met a pastor and the pastor told me something 
He said, man of God. If you, he's quite an elderly man. He said, if you continue going the way you are going, you are going to have such an exceptional ministry. I said, thank you, sir. I intend to. And that's why I seek people like you to add to my life. I am not ashamed of my ignorance. I'm not ashamed of my limitations and the things that I do not know. There are many things I do not know. I know some, but there are many others. If I knew them, I would not be where I am. And I humble myself to seek for knowledge. I see the way people trivialize knowledge and trivialize the sacrifices of others. Are we together? You call somebody you perceive to be valuable and then you tell the person, when can I come and meet you? Or when can you come and meet me? And the person says, why? He says, I have a business proposal. I want us to rob minds together. Sit down with your broke, bad attitude and you will never rise. Never, never rise. There's so many people who do that. Why am I challenging you? I want you to rise beyond the recession. You've heard the testimonies of people. This money has not flown anywhere. This greatness has not flown anywhere. The concept of recession to an individual is a mirage. Hear me. Please hear me. I understand business. I'm not daft. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm saying. The concept of recession is not supposed to be explained from an individual platform. It is when you look at the economy territorially, societally, then you can say based on the GDP of a nation, based on certain indices, a nation, when it does not meet certain things, then there is a recession. There is inflation or whatever it is. But not an individual. There has been no time in the Bible where famine affected everybody. There, were, there, there has always been exemption. Those who offer value are the ones who are exempted. Please hear me. What gives you the justification that between today, Friday, and next Friday, something would have entered your hand? Or I'm not necessarily just saying money. Somebody would have acknowledged the fact that God is using you to bless him. My life has been transformed. What value do you have? You see, the anointing does two things. It activates something within you that was not there and amplifies something within you that is there. It activates something within you that was previously not there or introduces a better word. Introduces something within you that was not there like the healing grace right like revelation the capacity utterance but then it also amplifies something within you that is there like creativity like leadership like your gift so number one your encounter with god that produces a fear of God in you. Number two, a transformed mind. Transformed beyond your cultural limitations. Number three, the discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. Please do not forget this. Greatness, wealth, any kind of achievement in the kingdom is based on a reward system. It's not just the issue of the will of God. The issue of the will of God as far as our greatness is concerned is not a mystery. It is clear in the word. I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord Jeremiah 29 and the 11th chapter. Thoughts of good and or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day, right? that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. There is always a part you have to play. There is a part that I have to play. Huh? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law, he says, shall not depart from out of thy mouth. He says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. 
then he says then only then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success success that does not steal away the time of your family success that does not steal away your life are we together give me five ten minutes let me talk a little let me take point three a little more write this down please I know that I've taught a lot about finances but let me just talk for five ten minutes on a few things about our financial life number one let me tell you something a job alone will limit you I want to I want to expand your horizon and work on your creativity a bit a job alone will limit you brothers and sisters no matter how much of a job you get no matter how great of a job you get a job does not have the capacity to fund your assignment your needs are plenty family needs the average African family has siblings that are looking up to you for assistance it's capital intensive to live in Nigeria to send children to school almost all of us here by the time you are a Christian and you are born again you have commitments to your church to your group to your ministry and part of it is financial commitment part of it there are several things you have to do that take money from you you are broke let me give us a little financial intelligence we'll always add this you are broke anytime your inflow is far far less than your outflow it, it is it is it, it you will always without fail be on deficit one naira comes into your life you need four naira to go out of your life you will be in trouble you will have to be in trouble you cannot be earning fifty thousand naira probably a hundred thousand and believe that that in itself you remove tight you remove a lot of things it is just not enough that's the challenge with our parents hundred thousand was enough when they had one child now they had they have five children but their finances have not increased so it's pinning them and straining them to death are we together what then is the solution activate other streams of income 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 don't sit down running around and say there's no job and I don't mean don't do small mediocre things that waste your time your energy your money and then at the end nothing comes out from it activate streams of income work on your mindset monetize your intrinsic value that is being developed you will rise above recession I tell you are we together did you know for instance did you know for instance every week we rent chairs in the dozens during the miracle service we rent thousands of chairs in the dozens that's someone's business are we together that's someone's business every week there are things only in this ministry alone that can make an individual a millionaire if he knows how to create a system around that value and supply it just i mean just koinonia alone please activate streams of income take responsibility for your life and don't give people anything substandard you are you are insincere and you are ungodly when you whet the appetite of people over a value you know you cannot offer don't be that insincere make sure that you have worked on yourself and you are competent enough then you can open up your hands for value don't collect a contract to help somebody roof his house and then you roof nonsense no don't do that if you know you cannot work on it package yourself work on yourself i work on myself every day i returned back from my trip yesterday as tired as i was i made sure that my daily goals were met please don't you think that it is just the anointing the anointing is there. I'm going to talk about it. 
Paul said, I thank my, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. I prepare an average of two to three sermons every week. It takes time. It takes research. It takes staying in the spirit. There are other aspects of my life I am involved in. What are you doing? There is no laziness. Don't sit down and say, oh God, when will you change my, my situation? Don't sit down and say, who will come and marry me out of this problem? Nobody. At least nobody in Koinonia. And brothers, don't wait and say, which lady? The Bible says, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Are we together? This is the undoing of Africa. This is the undoing of many people. My neighbors, um, they bought a few months ago, they bought a grinding engine. And the moment they bought that grinding engine and stationed there, at once they became relevant in that environment. Almost all the houses within that environment no longer enter a car and go to Samaru to go and grind beans or whatever. They come to them. What is their reward? The transportation of everybody who should go there now comes to them. A place that was previously very quiet and conservative. Now you see the people. Early in the morning the engine is up and they are grinding. Sometimes still late in the night and they are making money from it. Please I want you to go back and sit down and be sincere with yourself young and old sit down and say i now see why things are not working in my life i now see why i'm feeling the heat of the recession i am not saying you should be a money monger remember we've done financial dominion so you cannot sit down and say now which business do i do uh -uh. that's a wrong question how do i develop myself to rise to a point of value when you are valuable then now you build a system around that value that's what we call business. Business is simply the art of packaging your value that has been developed to serve a targeted people. Then you receive financial rewards among other things. There's nothing mysterious about business. Building a business is simply having a value, converting it to a product or a service that is needed and useful and then creating a system that informs your potential customers of what you have to give very simple but it's not as simple as it sounds the last point rise to a point of value rise to a point of value the last point what is the fourth key to becoming transgenerationally relevant the fourth key to rising beyond recession we name the series thrive to thrive does not mean to manage the tribe to thrive means to blossom thrive gives a picture of a plant growing out you see how a plant grows out of the soil and you see it moving regardless of of the strength of the soil it shoots through it and it blossoms that's what it means to thrive you don't thrive if there are no obstacles you thrive in spite of obstacles The fourth key is an encounter with the anointing. Ah, anointing. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing fall. Sing it one more time, everybody. Anointing fall on me, anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Ah. 
I love what I'm about to share with you. I'm telling you. Because it's something that has changed my life. You, you, see, you see the amazing dimension of God when you understand the anointing. You are amazing, Tim. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. anointing write this down let me give you a few definitions about the anointing the down the anointing is God's seal of authorization to represent him in your territory the anointing is God's seal of authorization is his authorization upon an individual to represent him the authorization for legislature the authorization to represent God and to represent heaven on earth the anointing Number two, the anointing is the capacity to produce change and compel compliance. The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Psalm 66 verse 3, how terrible art thou in thy ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. To compel compliance. Number three. Now I love this definition. The anointing is an empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. An empowerment to manifest, to reveal to make known the possibilities that are resident in God. There are possibilities in God. It's a slogan that we use here. Experience possibilities. I think the media should do a montage on this. Experience possibilities. It's a slogan we have come to not just recite but believe. We've indoctrinated ourselves with the fact that there, there are limitless possibilities in God. And those limitless possibilities can find expression to the degree to which the unction, the grace of God is at work upon the life of an individual. The Bible is a compendium. An unfolding of the possibilities that are resident in God. Revealed from generation to generation. Hallelujah. I got a testimony recently and um, I'm sure they may be following online and they, they sent it to me so I can share it in the open. When we went to Yola for the last crusade a few months, I think a month or two ago, we went to Yola. One of the person who was driving me around is a doctor, PhD, you know, with his wife. He's been married and they've, they've been, I mean, no child. This thing has not worked for them. And he decided that he was going to drive me around as a seed, you know, it's been a while they've been married they're probably following now and his wife couldn't take in and you know when they were done we're about to leave i asked him i said what would you want the lord to do and then prayed for them and he sent me a text i think it was on our way to bauchi now on our cookie no no bauchi was on our way to bauchi i just got a text he said apostle the text is still on my phone he said i called to tell you that my wife went to the hospital and they said i think she's three or a month pregnant Say results. Shout it. 
listen results are evidences that God is alive not just an evidence that a man is anointed it's much more than that it's much more than that it's much more than that during our dinner we'll be playing some videos I hope that the media would consider that I don't know what their plans are but I hope that they should incorporate that and one of the things that we're going to be doing is playing clips and showing you a few pictures of some of the external ministrations and some of you will marvel and wonder marvel and wonder at the hand of God and what he can do when a man is anointed I've said it and I will say it again and again the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference how can the anointing make a difference when it is the difference it is the very difference when all is said and done the grace that comes upon the life of a man I have found David my servant and with my holy oil I have anointed him and the enemy shall not exert upon him and then he reads on and he says and in his in my glory shall his horn be exalted listen let me tell you something I have come to respect the anointing not because of what it has done in my life alone but this ministry you see is a place of possibilities the testimonies the tearful testimonies that have come and it's not just because of Joshua Selman take the anointing out of my life and I'm as empty as this chair you see are we together someone's life is going to be changed because of the anointing someone's life will rise because of the anointing listen after you've worked on your gift your gift needs to be anointed it's one thing to be gifted but is your gift anointed it says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord but candle without fire on it cannot give illumination are we together there is an anointing that can come upon you and change the dimension of your entrepreneurial exploits and you will see things happen that you never believe there is an anointing that can come on you and your academic career just skyrockets in a way and a dimension there is an anointing that can come upon your music ministry so much more than the vocal competence and your work you lift a voice and sing a song and that song becomes somebody's healing that song becomes someone's i was watching a video today covenant christian center and i was watching their their um, leadership their, their summit that they hold their yearly summit and i was listening to some speakers and while they were talking i said my god these guys are not just business moguls they are they are absolutely anointed absolutely anointed are we together thou anointed my head with oil you did not anoint my cup you anointed my head but that anointed translated to my cup overflowing there is a relationship between what is on your head and what flows from your cup thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over in second kings chapter 4 the wife of the son of the prophets went to Elisha and Elisha said what do I need to do to you what is what is wrong what is the problem and she said you know this and that there is this situation and then he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing thy handmaid had nothing except a little cruise of oil and he said that's it he said go and borrow vessels verse 3 go and borrow vessels from all your neighbors he said borrow not a few borrow not a few if you increase capacity every oil assumes the shape of the container that holds it if i pour this water on the cover listen if i pour this water on the cover the cover will limit the water this makes this water look as though it is triangular pour it in a plate the plate will become like that are we together the anointing and then when she got it 
he now told her, he said, go and close the door. When the prophet was talking, the anointing is a living thing. It was hearing. It was hearing the discussion. And the moment she did that, she began to pour the oil. The oil began to multiply. Listen, it's not enough to be anointed. You must be anointed at a level that can command notable results. It's not enough to be anointed. The anointing is like currency. The anointing is like currency. 100 naira can buy sweet, but 100 naira cannot buy shoe. But it is still money. So don't say I'm anointed. The Bible says, Acts chapter 10, right? When Paul was speaking in the house of Cornelius, the salvation of the Jews, in verse 38, he said, How God anointed. Look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus. So it's not just that Jesus was anointed. Look at the extent. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then the Bible says on the strength of that anointing, he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. The anointing is not an instrument to shake and fall down and roll. No. Those are just effects of the anointing on the human body. And then alongside with other spiritual dynamics that happen at the point of impartation. But the proof that a man is anointed is not shaking. Results. Results. I don't care whether you shake like a leaf. Results, brothers and sisters. I just want to praise I lift my hands to say I love you you are everything to me and I exalt your Jesus are you the Messiah is it true that the anointing is on you and Jesus said all right watch this the blind eyes open the deaf ears hear and he said go back and tell John how do you know a man who is anointed results results don't trivialize results it's not all about the results are you joking what then is it about results lives changed results hallelujah when there are miracles and signs and wonders and lives transform you speak to someone and just one prophetic word turns his life around you've had all kinds of testimonies here someone with jam result 140 something after prayer you come back 260 something how do you explain that it's the anointing a woman barren for eight years returns with triplets no cs how do you explain that results are we together results a whole family almost ravaged with hiv that cause and it's not by sleeping around and just one prayer and everyone is healed not just one person it's called results brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth you may be criticized but you will never be ignored once the anointing of the spirit is upon the life of a man upon the life of a business satan will raise criticisms why so that your word will not be heard so that you will not be believed and so that people will not be blessed but here's what the bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth the truth was buried only for three days after three days it came back to life results results notable results not just results it says the spirit of the lord please give us isaiah 61 
the messianic prophecy it was a prophecy about jesus christ the spirit of the lord is upon me he says for he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free are we together and then he continues and he says to proclaim liberty to the captives and all of that to proclaim the year of vengeance of our god and all of that to comfort all those who mourn verse 3 and then he says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give them beauty for ashes that's what the anointing does beauty for ashes the oil of joy for the garment of praise right oh I'm, I'm, the oil of joy for money the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness then he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he through them might be glorified that they may be called oaks of righteousness brothers and sisters when a man comes to a ministry wretched terrible not born again and something happens to him it's called the anointing you get born again you get filled with the holy spirit your life is transformed your mindset is changed you become a leader you become an ambassador of the kingdom then you are now anointed again to reproduce say the anointing there is nothing one of our core values as you know in this ministry is the anointing we believe in the anointing and we believe that anything that is done outside of spiritual empowerment is a waste of time absolutely so you will see the technical department preparing as though they are prayer band because everything is done with respect to the anointing they believe that the sounds are not just instruments of physics they are spirit and life are we together listen please hear me i do not boast to have risen so far compared to where i need to go i am just starting but i can tell you this i have had the privilege of mentorship to clean upon the shoulders of those who represent the systems of god upon the earth and this is what they have done and this is what they do daily the keys are finite the keys are not infinite but every one of them is important for the door to open the keys to your destiny they are not infinite they are not so many but each and every one of them must be there in place it's like a code your passion for god a transformed mind your gifts and your abilities and then the anointing of god upon you no 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 you can't be weak you can't be weak you can't be weak it's my prayer that after this teaching someone will not just hear and say wow this was nice honestly when you see me talk like this i talk from my heart because this is it you know sometimes you can be looking for what you don't even know it is but when someone who has found it says look this is what you are looking for don't go around and waste your time and come back and say ah, ah, i didn't know it was like this hallelujah holy spirit you are welcome fill this temple with your presence make sure you talk to him while praying Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome to our lives and destinies. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, we wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. Please pray, please pray, those outside, you can come in, clear the way for them so they can come. Spirit, you are welcome. 
want you to sing the song. It's not a special number. Fill this temple with your power. That's what we need. The anointing upon our lives. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple. We wait on you. Spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Shabarataya. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. This is my prayer, Lord. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. with your destiny ah. I want you to mean business with your destiny don't worry about the rain there are people who will direct you strategically don't be distracted Na 
Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Father, I declare that my mindset must change. Lift your voice and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Are you praying? Change my mindset. Change my mindset. Change my paradigm. Hallelujah. Please help me, technical. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me. The quality of your life on earth is dependent on your level of mental transformation. Not every information is needed and useful for your destiny. The fact that you are getting information does not mean you are growing. The fact that you are learning new things does not mean you are rising. The information you are getting must be needed and useful. It must be needed and useful. I like you to pray and say, Lord, the grace to edit everything that is not useful for my life and destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Ela que te presta te prende sabra de balaraba. Embrusa seca tu sopra te escala baria da balaraba balaraba balaraba. Raca da baga da baga da balaraba cal sabra que da balaraba. Embreto com tu pronto tu solto para que te leva baba baba. The right knowledge, the right information, the right knowledge, the right information. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's raining, but we're still praying. Hallelujah. Apologize to some of those who are at the aisle outside. Sincerely apologize. Hallelujah. As much as possible, if they can find any place, even if it's just outside, let's see how we can help them. But regardless of what condition you're in now, let me tell you, it is profitable what you are doing. Because it will pay you more than money. In the name of Jesus, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, what have you put in my life that should bless my world? Reveal it, reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. Sopra te che se barara 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 
Lord, my gift, Lord, the ability that you have put within me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. There is an ability, 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 there is an ability within my spirit, there is an ability that can change my life, there is an ability that can change my environment. Hallelujah. 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 We're praying. The Bible says there is this treasure. The vessel containing it may be earthen, but the treasure is not earthen. It says there is this treasure in Joshua Selman. There is this treasure in Koinonia that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. I like you to say every gift you have put in me, Lord, bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Lift your voice and pray. Every hidden potential. Every hidden potential. Oh yes, I'm rising. Beyond recession, I'm rising. Beyond limitation, there is a gift in me. Embrace Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, not because you are tired of sitting down. He said, they that sat in darkness, the city of Nephtha and Zebulun, he said, they have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says, for darkness, confusion, shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people he said but upon you his glory shall arise verse 3 says gentiles hallelujah gentiles shall come you will not look for them gentiles will come to your light gentiles will come you will not publicize there is an unction there is a gift there is an ability gentiles shall come to your light then there are kings to the brightness of your rising it says your gates shall be continually open they will not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the gentiles listen i want you to lift your voice and cry and say all those who have been ordained to honor my gift i call them into my life lift your voice and pray please be serious Everyone in every territory called, ordained, anointed. Everyone called to honor your gift. Your business acumen, your intellectual capacity education your skill everyone ordained of God everyone ordained of God everyone ordained of God to honor what you carry call them for by the power of the prophetic by the power of the prophetic Ra 
anointing that will lift you higher. You are not down, but where you are is the limitation of the unction in ministry, in business. There is an oil. There is an unction. Thou anointest my head with oil. Lift your voice and pray for more. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Upon my life, fresh grace. Upon Koinonia, new levels, new dimensions of kingdom exploit. For the sake of His Majesty. Oh, upon my life, upon my life, I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. There is a supernatural anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, taking me higher, taking me higher. The power of the Holy Ghost, a superior unction upon my life, a superior unction upon my business, a superior unction. Hey. Upon my marriage, a superior unction, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. It's raining, but hear me. I am a living testimony that when a man cries unto God, he can hear. The last two or three months have been phenomenal seasons of my life. Stepping into strange operations of graces and unctions. Testimonies beyond imagination. You can pray it through genuine desire. A heart that is thirsty. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, anoint me. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I'll take my life, breathe on me. Sons 
so solomon says because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee because of the ointment so realms you have never entered will come to you it's not just talking of women because of the ointment upon my head so do the virgins love thee they desire to be with you we are going to pray I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart you are going to challenge every door of limitation see let me tell you honestly if we are to be truthful with ourselves there are people you are not down but you are not up either you can move up when you are up you know you are there I like you to pray and say I challenge limitations you are a spirit and I speak to you this season you are living lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray I challenge limitation over my life I challenge limitations I challenge limitations Everything fighting my anointing, fighting my influence, fighting the glory of the Lord upon Koinonia. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. We come with the rod of a higher priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray again. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. Multiplied grace. Influence means a platform. A platform that can afford you an opportunity to shape the minds of people. I like you to pray. We have been indoctrinated that influence is a bad thing. Without influence, the kingdom cannot advance. The key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism, it's influence. The key, and I, if I be lifted up, not if I be talked about, I will draw all men. The capacity to stand at the front line of systems and legislate and be a communicator of the realities of Christ. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, every influence destined for me, I decree that the grace for it must come on me. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, desire it. Your heart is pure. Influence. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings, access to nobles, access to kings, access to men of influence, access to custodians of systems. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the blessings. And the secret that is responsible for the ease in this ministry is unusual access, unusual influence. God has given us access to politicians, access to governmental figures, access to kings, access to financial people, access to mentors, access to voices that can advocate access to the credibility of men access to their willingness to let you leverage upon their success i want you to pray again and say lord the access i need to end struggle bring it to my life bring it to my life lift your voice it's not as hard as we make it influence is powerful influence is powerful I like you to pray. Lord.
Lord, I desire influence. The capacity to rise to a platform where your name can be heard, where your glory can be seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen. The body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. The body would have remained there indefinitely. It was not a prayer warrior that demanded the body. A man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says he was a noble man. A man of influence. And he used his access. Are we together? To Herod. To Caesar. To demand the body of Jesus. He was a noble man. He had influence. He had a virgin tomb. He had influence. And he said, look, Herod, I need the body of this man. And he said, you have it. There are things you have been praying for that influence will give you at a platter of gold. Are we together? I shared with you the testimony years ago. Listen to me. How that somebody was too short to get to NDA and they said you are disqualified and then he came back and because he had access to the emir he complained and the emir said they should go back to NDA and tell the people that emir yakara we should say the emir has added his height they should take him that's the power of influence are we together I have gotten certain things in my life on the sheer platform of influence you need it don't let mediocres deceive you that you don't need it that's why somebody can come and bully a church with their land and collect it together with all the lawyers there there is no influence in the military you should have influence somebody that can stand and become a representative imagine if Daniel was not in Babylon Imagine if Esther was not in the king's palace. Imagine if Joseph was not in Egypt. Let me show you how men. There was a time they wanted to kill Paul. It was not prayer. Paul took advantage of his influence. Will you kill a Roman citizen? Because the issue was too serious. If he said I'm an apostle, you would have died there. He said I'm a Roman citizen. Ah. Uh -uh. You don't touch Roman citizens. We have been preached far too long in the body of Christ that the desire for influence is carnality. No. Carnality is the influence of things on your relationship to God. It has nothing to do with wealth. I want to be friends with multi-millionaires. I want to be friends with governmental figures so that we can come and say, can you give us land for church here? And they say, ah, you, please have it protocols have been bypassed in my life protocols have been bypassed in this ministry because God has granted us grace we are friends with the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers we are friends with the police, the military you name it from any angle there is somebody to speak when a student is victimized on campus there are intellectuals among us there are people who we can speak to oh daddy sir, mommy sir please can you help this person let me tell you, it's a tragic thing when you are in the place of help and there is no voice to speak. Sometimes you are in the prison, you don't have access to the palace. You need somebody who is already in the palace to say, no, I endorse this person. This person is a man of integrity. It's not all about what you can do by yourself. Are we together? Nigeria that is full of bureaucracy and sentiment. You need men and women strategically positioned to help you. Matthew Ashimolowo was the first Christian to be allowed in Ghana, Ghana TV, mainstream, to preach. They refused it. The indigenous pastors did everything to do. They refused it. But when he came, because he was connected to somebody who was connected to the government and they knew that their daily bread was dependent on it, they allowed it. Who has God raised in your life to speak for you? Brothers and sisters, you cannot rise here though. Let me tell you, it's a mystery I'm sharing with you. You need men of influence. It's a class of destiny helpers.
we together? That somebody can speak to you. Yes, I know the rent is due and they are about to throw you out. But somebody is a friend to your landlord. He can say, please landlord, I know that you are supposed to drive this, but this person is my son. And he said, on grounds of relationship. Do you know, let me tell you, when how you know there is no help in your life is when you get into trouble. You fight alone. You pray alone. When Daniel was in the den, Darius could not sleep. He rose up the next day. He said, oh Daniel, has your God delivered you? When he said to so say, bring him out, go and carry all those people. Throw them in. Who can punish your enemies? Who has what it takes to bring to book they that speak against the purposes of God? Every one of our board of trustees by the grace of God in this ministry is a man or a woman of influence. Are we together? If there are people today, the government cannot come and pull them. There are churches. One of my pastor friends was speaking to me. He heads the branch of one ministry in a particular northern city. And he said how that they had refused. They showed him the letter signed by the governor that they cannot give land. It's impossible. No matter what you do, they cannot give church land. All the other churches that had it had it since. But in recent times, no, they will not give it. And a particular denomination in this country, they decided to do an expansion program. And they have six of their churches there. All of them own their land. They influence. Shout it again. Somebody call somebody who said, Look, be careful. This seat you are in is for four years. You don't play with no matter how stupid, no matter how a madman is, he does not enter fire by mistake. You need influence. There are many believers, there are many families that are bullied, and there's no one they can run to. There are many men of God that are bullied. They've not, the Bible said, be wise as serpents. You live in an economy, a system that is hostile to anything God. You need influence. Unfortunately, all the people in our lives are like us. We are the most influential persons among them. When God taught me this, I started making friends with billionaires. I'm not looking for their money. Access and influence. Are we together? The property that we want to get, the person said they were, they were giving it to somebody. There are some business persons who came and wanted to get it. But because of influence, they said, no, 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 David. We want to give believers and we want to give this ministry. Brothers and sisters, if you don't pray this prayer, you will struggle alone. You don't have to pay for everything by yourself. Let influence pay for some things for you. One more time, I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, connect me to men of influence. Men who fear God, they are men of influence. One recommendation can give you a job. It can give you a job. One recommendation can honor your proposal. Be wise as serpents. Be wise as serpents. Be gentle as doves. Be wise as serpents. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I pray for you. In the name of the Lord God of heaven. I pray for you sincerely from the depth of my heart. Number one, that the passion that you have for God will multiply a thousand times. That the passion you have for God will multiply a thousand times. Number two, I pray for you. Access to relevant teachings and material that will reprogram your mind. Receive it. Receive that access in the name of Jesus access to relevant resources that will correct wrong thinkings, wrong conditionings that authorize demons and self-inflicted predicaments based on an incorrect understanding of life. I pray that you find access to those materials. Number three, I pray for you. 
the gift of God upon my life by grace has opened me up to realms I never dreamt of. I pray for you. I don't know what gift my God has put in you. But hear me brothers and sisters, I want you to receive it. From the depth of my heart, may that gift come alive. May that ability come alive. May that ability come alive. The discipline to refine your gift to a point of flawless global competence. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background. Your name can be Solomon. You will remain poor until what needs to be addressed be addressed. That's why I told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance. Listen, as we begin to pray, many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone. Really, when you understand this, you will know what a miracle is. A miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs. This is what Jesus did to the woman who was bound. He looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years. And he said, woman, thou art loose. Loose? He didn't say thou art healed. He said thou art loose. The moment the spirit left, he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body. And there she went. Remember that madman at Gadare? That was an evangelist in a cave. Tearing himself into pieces. The moment the spirit heard that Jesus was coming, they were waiting for him at the other side. Hallelujah. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. I'll never forget one time I was praying. Praying seriously, I was in the spirit. And I had a vision. I saw that there is a tree that is close to and where I stay. And I didn't see that tree again. I just saw a great beast like, like, a, like a being. The tail was a snake. The eyes were big like human head. Imagine this head now like an eye. Two of them. One here, one here. And the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger. And all he told me is, so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity. And then it left. That was it. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. That's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you, the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person. So your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me. And Satan will say, Amen. Let's go. And then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say, help me. Tonight we are going to cry to the King of Kings. I don't know if you came for this miracle service, especially for those who are family people here. You should never go back the same. You see the results of people 4.8 five points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because i didn't read well is that really true how many of you watch film twice to explain it? You sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife. And that was, you didn't read for it. Yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course. And then at the end of it, you come and fail it and get nonsense. And you keep convincing yourself. It's just that I didn't get it. It is the reason why you can read a novel of 1,000 pages but a lifetime you can't read half of the Bible because there is a spirit stopping you. If this was a novel, some of us would say, take this, I will bring it for you next week Friday and you will exhaust it. But from the day you were born, the day you were born till today, you have not read up to one third of the Bible. One time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later 
Remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward. You started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance. After you read it, you now threw it away. Because you cannot help yourself in the flesh. It takes the anointing of the spirit. That's why he sends carpenters. That's why he puts miracle services like this. So that you can come under the influence of God's power. How about genotype issues? SS. You get up and find out you are SS or AS. Do you know the Bible never mentions the issue of SS or AS? Are you aware of that? That thing was a technology that was fabricated by Satan. To stop people from getting married. You see a beautiful lady who has a prophet in her womb to come. And then one spirit just brings one, one demonic report called SS. And they say, sorry, we can't join you. Because you are going to kill your children. For that devil is a liar in this place tonight. I'm challenging you because when we rise, we are going to pray. The miracles will start as we pray. You've got to be angry with yourself. And say, no, enough is enough. Enough is enough. We are come to Mount Zion. Where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescue the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescue the earth lives in me Sing it two more times with faith in your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Jump up on your feet and sing it one more time. Same power. Conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, power that conquer the grave. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Listen, deliverance therefore is a separation. It's the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences. The spirits that attempt to influence your life. The legal separation. Brothers and sisters, when that happens to you, then you will see gates open by themselves. When that happens to you, you will see realms of favor. All these things people pray on. You must challenge those spirits. You must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family. And God is ready for us tonight, I tell you. God is ready for us tonight. Lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word. The body without a spirit is dead. 
the body without a spirit is dead now i realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank him for this revelation lord i now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let the dissatisfaction rise from you Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me the power that can challenge any altar the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft any generational cause one more time sing it that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me Rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Same power, power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, say your love. hallelujah lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it say it must stop tonight lift your voice oh come on koinonia you should be praying challenge the spirit challenge the spirit Behind failures, challenge the spirit. Behind marital delays, challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure 
without the spirit that sponsors it is dead barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead are you getting what i'm saying the key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing for a body without a spirit is dead any cause without a spirit backing it is dead it's null and voice any pronouncement any enchantment without a spirit is dead therefore i want you to lift your voice and i want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions Pray. He Ia must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will... They will bring you into error so that everything you see misleads you into trouble i'd like you to lift your voice again just do what i'm asking you to do from the realm of the heavens challenge powers challenge forces over your finances Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle listen as this prayer goes on miracles will start immediately many of you will start getting reports from your body many of you will be open to visions right now lift your hands hallelujah 
my goodness there is such a heavy unction on me it's for deliverance tonight it must give way for you to move forward at the count of three hear me listen i want you to shout jesus at the top of your voice at the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction as you shout it fire some of you visions your eyes will be open in the spirit you will see covens catching fire Mata Labata. father you told me tonight is a night of deliverance there are families under bondage there are businesses under bondage enough is enough let your fire bring deliverance are you ready now at the count of three may heaven invade this place one two three second gentleman i command covens i command altars i command spirits bring them out Fire! 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 Bring deliverance tonight! Baraka Bariba Taya! Eva Akusegene Gene 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 the Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison. Physical poison. As you shout, physically, it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata, bata. Shaka, ta, ta, ta. Mare, de, 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 pa. Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now, as you shout, Jesus, we have victim. One. Two, three. Shake it, 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 let you go. He must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. My goodness fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the Lord is giving me a word right now there are ladies here there is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you to sleep with you right now lord where are they let that fire let that fire bring deliverance right now right now right now right now every spirit husband every manifestation every spirit wife every devil that has leads to you it leaves you now now right now He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Ala barata toko to baradaba, shenderete katele boshpa, raka baroto supati na malada. Let me tell you something. After this miracle service, you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you. That's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks.
Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers, I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers. Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now right now and make your way to the front i see someone having severe pain your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy god is healing people can you appreciate jesus hallelujah there are miracles happening make your way to the front now we'll give you room to testify stand here all the people that are coming out for miracles just stand here right now there are miracles that are happening i see someone like your nose it's like there is an irritation in your nose while we were praying you felt like there was fire on it and now it's lifted now it's lifted completely it's gone right now right now right now i'm seeing someone severe peptic ulcer it hooks you hooks you very seriously as we started praying it just disappeared who is that make your way to the front right now right now right now I see a lady, you hear a voice telling you you will die. Not a vision, a physical voice. Physical voice. It tells you you will die. A physical voice. Physical voice. It speaks to you physically. Can you help me? All the please, if I don't call anybody's case, I'm going to pray for the sick. I'm calling miracles. Cases have happened. Help me. Um, Aaron, would you help me? Just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies. God is giving people miracles. Miracles right now. Miracles right now. Miracles are happening right now. I'm seeing somebody. Listen. There is a growth. You came here with the growth at the back of your neck. Check it now. It has disappeared. Check it now. Now. And make your way to the front. Put your hand there and check it. You will find out that that growth is gone. Completely. I'm seeing two holes. Two holes of a left teeth being healed. Right now. Check it. You won't find the hole again. Two holes. Two holes of your teeth. Check it right now and make your way to the front. My goodness. God is doing miracles in this place. There are miracles that are happening. Miracles that are happening. I saw this same case in Kaduna this morning. Now, I'm seeing four people. Four people. There is one guy and three ladies. You have pile. Pile. For one of the ladies, when you go to ease yourself, it's as if you are giving birth. Blood comes out. Go and check yourself now. You'll find out that that pile is gone. Gone back to the devil. Go and check it, please. Please, we're not playing games. Don't sit back. Confirm your miracle and seal it. I know there is a guy. I saw a guy. Pile. Severe pile. Hallelujah. 
the Lord is showing me a lady. Tears just start coming out of your eyes. Without any... You are not crying. But it just starts coming out. It's very embarrassing. It starts coming out. Right now, the Lord is healing you. Wherever you are, confirm it and make your way to the front right now. Confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now. Right now. Confirm it and make your way to the front. We'll give all of them room to testify. God is healing people right now. I'm seeing someone with this finger. Look at me. This finger. This very finger. That's what the Lord is showing me. There is a miracle happening on that finger. This very one. I don't know if it broke or something happened to it. But there is a miracle happening to that finger right now. Right now. I'm hearing a name, Gabriel. 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 Who is Gabriel? Gabriel. 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 The Lord is bringing a, a miracle for Gabriel. Gabriel. I've been fighting this name, but let me bring it out. I'm hearing a name, Asabe. I don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family. Asabe. Asabe, I'm hearing that name. Who is Asabe? Please confirm. Make sure you confirm it. Let's not. Huh? You are Asabe? Uh, but I'm seeing another person again. No. Eh? This, you are Asabe. Please stand here. Miracles everywhere. Come, tell us. Very quickly, come, come. Please help us. Give Aaron. Let's, let's coordinate them. Okay, come, sir. Let's just listen to this. Give them the mic, Lawrence. Just testify. Tell us, look at the crowd, straight to the point. What happened to you? What is the miracle? Praise the Lord. I am the girl who the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012 yes. and now what happened every day once i put my hand i i always notice blood coming out but now i felt something drop out of my nose that devil leaves you forever in the name of jesus christ free give jesus praise god is doing miracles here all kinds of miracles are happening in this place please the next people let's have them come very quickly just turn and let's testify don't look at me look at the crowd praise the lord hallelujah i i have this bonus while we are confession. talking there is a lady who will come confession. strongly under the anointing outside please pick that lady and bring her hallelujah. as we are talking the power of god is in fact two ladies two ladies outside mightily by the anointing please pick them and bring them yes ma'am hallelujah on my left thigh i have this burning sensation i don't even know what cause but i know that once it started it burns me as if i'm sitting on fire okay but now it's gone and since last hearing this voice saying I will die, even when I was coming last week, I had this fear that I was going to. But right now, gone. completely gone. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Yes, please. Check yourself. If you see a miracle, you can come out. We are going to pray for the sick, but we want to take testimonies. We'll give you an opportunity to tell us what God is doing. Mama, please stand up. Please don't let Mama sit down for God's sake. Give her a chair. Mama should not be kneeling down. Praise yes, Lord. please. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So peptic ulcer. Out, but while we started praying, it left me. And There's I'm one more outside. Go and carry her. She's it left me immediately now i'm not feeling it again. no pain again give jesus praise yes ma'am praise the, praise the lord i used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002 but um when i went to see the doctor they said it was pneumonia it's, sometimes i can't breathe pneumonia the pastor said I should, we should shout jesus i can't breathe i can't shout too much but the moment i shout jesus i fell on the floor everything just left you no pain again praise the lord let me pray for you it never returns to you in the name of jesus i'm seeing someone with an eye problem i don't know what the eye problem is but it's living right now please confirm yourself eye problem check it check it we're not playing games please check it check it eye problems 
I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem, confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people, please make your way to the front. At least 10 people, check it right now. God is doing a miracle. Don't sit back. Inside and outside, lower abdominal region. Lower abdominal region. That miracle is happening right now. Right now, right now. At least 10 people. 10 people with that pain. As soon as you check it, make your way to the front. Celebrate Jesus. God is healing them. They are coming. They are coming. All of you, you can come and stand here. The moment you receive a miracle, please stand here. They will confirm you. At least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a gentleman. You came here with a throat condition. In fact, um, let me just describe to you. They are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat. It's like there is an elongation. Some, I'm seeing them saying they want to use, is it knife or something? And cut something that, uh, an elongation. Who is that person? The Lord is healing you right now. Right now. You can't swallow things. You always feel like it's like bone. But it's like there is something on your throat. Almost perpetually. Right now, check it, check it. Check it completely. The power of God is coming upon you. There is a lady. God is healing your mother. But the power of God will come upon you as a witness to that. Lord, where is that lady right now? Where is that lady? Identify her, oh God, by the power of God. Right now. Right now. Right now. Please bring the lady out. God is healing her mother right at home. And God is using what is happening as as a point of contact as a point of contact shabaratoko subarada baladaba nengredu so supratishi baladaba i'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump i'm seeing one on the left left side please check it check it when you receive a miracle testimony is one way to seal it and keep it the lord is showing me three ladies your hair falls every time you go to comb your hair you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly Please loud and straight to the point. Praise the Lord. Help I, us sound, please. Can you help us with this mic? I used to have this pain down my stomach here, but now I'm, I'm not feeling completely okay. gone. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. How long has it been? Yes. Come on, Koinonia. Let's not get too used to miracles in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. It never returns to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The next person, please. My goodness, look at what God is doing. God is giving people miracles. Go ahead. My own is like I'm pregnant. It's become like pain as in I'm pregnant and I've been complaining that for months. But today, when the prayer was going on, I felt relieved and my stomach is In fact, open. as she was talking, hold on. The Lord opened my eyes. There is a lady. Your stomach is already swelling. This is almost, it's even beginning to embarrass you. It's not just like a stomach protruding. You are feeling it very hard and stiff. Um, it's, you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now God is giving you a miracle God is giving you a miracle God bless you, bless you quickly when they say we should shout praise the Lord, so I now shout the stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria but I can't feel it again Completely gone. Yes. give Jesus praise it never returns again, yes please praise the Lord um, recently I started having this eye pain when I'm walking, doing other things, one of the eyes get blank and I don't see again. But now, after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I still have this abdominal pain almost all the time. But it just left me immediately. Give Jesus praise. It never returns to you again in the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So, 
I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance. And Complete deliverance. Please help them so that they don't fall on. on. Praise the Lord. The abdominal pain normally comes and goes. And when I was outside, I was still feeling my stomach hooking such that I could not stand well. I was bending. And then when the man of God spoke, I got up and stretched and to the glory Completely of the Lord. Completely no pain again. Come on, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Thank you, Lord. Mine is more of um, creativity ideas that God is to give me every day when I'm in my quiet time. And it's, it happens that every time I try to push further, I realize that there are a lot of setbacks, distractions, and uh, confusions that comes my way. And right now, but what has right happened? now, when at the mention of the name Jesus, I felt my body on fire. I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes. of that creativity yes, comes sir. to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At the shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika concerning pain in the pain. joint. You went to the hospital. Yeah. What did they say is wrong with you? They, did, they couldn't see anything. They couldn't see anything. Yeah. Okay. And when you were praying, you prophesied that there is a uh, ten people here that that God is working on yes. their system. And, and now what has happened to you? The pain is gone. The pain is completely Even gone. Give Jesus praise. Even the medical report is in my room. The medical report is in your room. Yeah. You go and check yourself and you find out. All of you that were under the anointing, when you get up, don't just go back to your seat. Check. You will find out that all kinds of things have happened. You are not just falling for nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise the, praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. <laughs> the power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there's okay. this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the case, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later, you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I notice like it's swelling up and sometimes I, very, I feel like very, a swelling there. Yeah, and feel, now, have you checked it? Yes. I, Is there I, anything I there? Okay Completely gone. Come on, give Jesus praise. It never returns again in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the spirit of fear as in I do get scared a lot but I now I'm free in the name the of Jesus. The spirit of fear. Come. It never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, Praise please. the Lord. I want, to, I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child. When, when, I was, when I was young, I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I, I feel relieved. I just Completely. Want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes second of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her. Fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I ca can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced, I saw I've been that shaking, a baby, a finger. I've been shaking it and no I've pain now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Praise. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. This Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress, Mama. If she's if she's out because she's sick, Mama Kizona Zah make you a dua, please. You people should not stress this old woman. If she should even when she's coming out, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her. Please. The Lord is, is wiping the tears in your family. You believe that? 
when a word comes like it it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother yes. do, you, do you have an elder yes. brother what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though. is your brother he, where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they're saying it, it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. is that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia yes. that the lord said he's going to connect him to a rich man he should be faithful to that man Amen. that man will bless him Amen. father let there be breakthrough in this family in the name of jesus asabe gabriel oh your name is gabriel your name too is gabriel sir Who is Titi Lyo? Titi Lyo. I'm hearing a name, Titi Lyo. Please, let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Lyo. I'm hearing the name, Titi Lyo. Titi Lyo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing the Lord is sir it won't be too long you are leaving Gusau we spoke at least we spoke that one is not word of knowledge we, we spoke about it but it won't be too long the Lord is lifting you to another place go and write it down this will happen to you it won't be too long write it down you will come back and testify before them it's not a disadvantage it's something that will bless you in no small way because you have come with your heart open in the name of the lord jesus christ father i lay my hands i pray right now that you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the lord jesus christ i hear breakthrough for you sir this is what i hear the lord is saying i should announce breakthrough to you father i hold his hands and i announce breakthrough in jesus name Praise the Lord. Your mother is sick. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past one year. Bleeding? You, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing? No, you are just standing to agree yes, for her. okay no problem we have a session for that but since you came out hold my hands hold my hands look at me do you believe god will touch your mother where is she where is home taraba taraba state yes, sir. you are from taraba yes, sir. lord show mama mercy right now in the name of jesus christ as it touches you it touches her please don't just come out at will ah, you are related to her your sister is Titi Lyo. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Kaduna. What's she doing? She's schooling at Kaduna. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You? I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her. Is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? because she has been praying about this your mother where's your mother your mother has been joining her to pray yes, your mother even went to a man of god and they prayed about yes. this thing is that true your mother went to a man of god to pray go and tell her that the lord is saying marriage comes for her in the name of the lord jesus christ our god is an awesome god he raised hallelujah now please this is the time to minister specially to sick people you know the nature of our programs here we will need a lot of time so if you are not sick if you are escorting somebody please just bring the person and go back and once they pray for you don't wait for another prayer one touch is okay some of you when they pray for you you refuse you still stand back please once they pray for you just check yourself and go back praise the lord and then don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that if you came with somebody who is sick now is the time to bring them out while we are praying please arrange them now is mama's time all these all our mothers they can make their way now our god is an awesome god he raised from heaven above with Way 
pray for them. Clear the way for sick people. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. Hallelujah. Now let's save time. While we are praying for the sick, all of you begin to submit your prayer request. Please, I permit you to put on your phone. If you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests, call them. Because what God is doing tonight is unusual. Call them and tell them there's fire upon this place. They should submit their prayer requests. Ushers, please begin to go around. Those online, those who are connecting with us through the internet, they can also connect by faith. As we trust God for miracles, worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. You do mighty, you do glory, you do glory, you are a faithful awesome is your name, awesome is your name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you, any child, hear me, I'm saying this especially to we young people, any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well done, sir. Please sit down. Your dad. Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs are swollen. Because it's been long I saw him. He's been, he doesn't breathe well. And at the same time, he's having problem with mama. And all of his children look at him except me. The same problem that mama is having. Like, but it's just similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now 
as I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ. And there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're oh God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at a very awesome serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How will you like to have a child? That do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names. We lay hands upon this child. We are not only praying that God will heal him. But God will use him. My God I pray right now. Let the brain begin to develop. We cause the spirit. That is responsible for this wickedness. Right now in the name of Jesus. Sorry, who brought her? 
I say, I, I go village, now I'm mad from village. I go election. I will charm from village. Look at this. Mama went for election. They fired something upon her head. Now she's mad. Is she mad? Is she your dog now? Yes. You are mad. No, you are. You are not mad in the name of Jesus. Say, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. In the name of Jesus. Whoever organized that charm on your head, it returns back to them sevenfold. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter. You are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? Come. Do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you? I'm looking at you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing you smoking something. Eh? Tell me the truth. Don't tell lies. This is what death would have killed you. You are smoking a... Uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? In the hem, you go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. Yes, this is look at look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a well wind on his head. You you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you'll be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are, oh, you are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it. But I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. I curse that madness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for supernatural healing. Look at me. Look at me. Lift your hands. Forget about the wound. Lift it up. Careful. You broke the hand. Oh, it can't lift. Oh, I see. No, no, no. If it can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes it go in this place. If you know you smoke it go or codeine, altar, once I make the altar call, just run and come and kneel down here because tonight is your night of salvation please don't play games with your destiny anything you smoke anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency the moment there's time for altar call please make your way here we love you but then the lord wants to touch you let's hurry up because our time is gone your name is here. out
out.
right now at the same time an altar call is co- as an altar call will be going those who need Jesus Christ you are here right now inside and outside there are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies the ones that I spoke to now is the time you can come before the presence of God don't feel bad we're a family and any other person there are those who are saying Lord I'm tired of the way my life is I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life be my Lord and Savior let your life come upon me I break free from habits from sins and everything that destroys my life from today I'm a child of God I am saved in the name of Jesus let me pray for you Lord I thank you for these ones unashamedly they have come before you preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus I break the power of sin over your life you will never return especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking you will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ that power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to follow a gentleman they will have your details and then on Tuesday unfailingly please be around um, meet with the prayer department and um, will fire you up you'll be with them for at least a month they will guide you the gentleman is waving his hand salute them everybody congratulate them stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute please everybody rise we're rounding up stretch your hands towards a prayer request your request is here begin to speak prophesy prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ prophesy over it prophesy over it Lord unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come are you praying 
Lord do miracles every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here we judge that spirit every spirit every covenant every influence makata lato desetebe manda brendo so so prida balada basca pratica de bene rebos prato so preteke de bene rebos every spirit responsible for barrenness here yeah. responsible for any setback in the name of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it lord let your people have testimonies in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ we declare that every request every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ and you will stand to testify before the people of god in the name of jesus christ i pray now lift your hands and receive the prophecy i decree and i declare over you every confusion in your life every cry for direction right now in the name of jesus may you receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life every area of confusion i arrest it right now you will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way in the name of jesus christ for those who are students i pray for your academics the exams that are about to come your best result in your various institutions this exam is what will produce it in the name of the lord jesus christ may you record five points in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for every family represented here whatever has stagnated your family by this anointing i declare move forward move forward move forward in the name of jesus christ everything that has covered your glory so that the glory of the lord upon your life will not be seen in the name of jesus we tear that veil off we tear that veil off by the power of the holy spirit whoever needs to help you before next miracle service i call them forth into your life mysterious helpers mysterious helpers in the name of jesus christ i pray for you fresh grace for prayer fresh anointing for prayer every lack of passion for the things of god i kill it right now in the name of jesus every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life it dies a natural death here tonight in the name of jesus christ i pray for you with these hands that are lifted go and begin to produce results go and heal the sick go and open doors for the oppressed in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle marriages we release those marriages right now i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle jobs we release those jobs right now please believe me as i pray we release those jobs right now in the name of the lord jesus christ anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now i speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of jesus christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of jesus christ i command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may god show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions 
whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the lord jesus christ i prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of jesus i declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may god use you mightily 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 i declare may the mantle of honor come upon your life that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence i cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may god bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ i see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically i'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically i prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of jesus christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st in the name of the lord jesus christ we decree and declare over your life you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of god there is someone here you are standing you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch one week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ 
Thank you so much for coming. We love you and we honor you. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. They'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you'll have a few details. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.